everlasting mercy that you've allowed to rest upon each of us, O oh God. Now, Father, as we gather here this morning, we thank you for this opportunity, for this privilege to once again uh, stand and take your clue, Lord, the clue that you gave us, uh, all the way back into the book of Genesis, that man should not be alone, and that the woman that you created from Adam's rib was made to stand back with son. So God, we come now with that purpose in mind. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. amen. We're going to ask that come on forward. We're going to ask that the, the bride and the groom would come forward. We have today Karen, Felicia, Temple, and William Daniel Walker. And they say that they can see your face there. You got it? Okay. I'm not standing in front of them, am I? I'm good. Okay. I said, scoot over some. I said, scoot over some there. Amen. 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 Let us begin. To each of you who are gathered here today, beloved of the Lord, we're gathered here in the sight of God and all of these witnesses to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. The Word of God tells us that God himself performed the first wedding ceremony way back in the Garden of Eden between Adam and his wife Eve. Therefore, because God has put his blessings upon this union, and this is a service of Christian worship, it is the work of God. Let us pause for just a moment, just a moment again, thanking God for the grace that he's allowed to fall upon us today. Oh God, thank you once again for your blessings upon this particular service, upon this ceremony, upon the, the uh, joining together of this man and this woman. Amen. Amen. The Bible declares that marriage is a type of union uh, between, similar to that of Christ and the church. It is an earthly portrayal of a heavenly reality. I want to read to you the words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the church at Corinth. He said, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it, that should, it should be holy and without blemish. So husbands, that's you, William. Husbands <coughs> ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church. For no one ever hated his own flesh, for we are members of his body, and we are of his flesh and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined with his wife, and the two shall become one. Amen? Amen. I have some vows that we want to need to repeat. Amen. William, do you take this woman? You can look at her. <laughs> William, do you take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Do you promise from this day forward to provide for her leadership? Do you promise to perform unto her all of the obligations and responsibilities of a Christian husband? Do you pledge yourself to her and her only to comfort her, to honor her, and to keep her in sickness and in health? Forsaking all others, keep yourself only for her so long as you both shall live. <coughs> Let me say that again. I do. <laughs> Karen, do you take this man? 
to be your lawfully wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony? Do you promise from this day forward? Do you promise uh, to accept him as your leader? Do you promise to perform unto him all of the obligations and responsibilities of a wife? Do you pledge to love him, to comfort him, to honor him, to keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, to keep him all, yourself only for him, so long as you both shall live? I like the emphasis that puts on that. <laughs> In the great love chapter of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, let me read to you what the great apostle said, speaking of love. He said that love suffers long. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up, does not behave itself rudely, does not seek its own. Love is not provoked, and it thinks no evil does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Paul says that love never fails. Do we have the ring? There's something special about these rings. Two things. First of all, they're made of precious metal to symbolize the preciousness of your relationship. Precious in the eyes of God and precious to each of you. Secondly, the ring is a circle with no ending point. It is a perfect circle that is joined with no end, symbolizing the type of relationship, the type of relationship that your marriage will be. Precious in the sight of God, precious to each one of you, and never end. With this ring, with this ring, I be wed. I be wed. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Spirit. I want you to continue facing one another. And William, I want you to repeat after me. I, I William Daniel Walker. William Daniel Walker. Take thee. Karen Felicia Temple, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for better or for worse, for better or for worse, for richer or for, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, so death do us part. Karen, repeat after me. I, I Karen Felicia Temple, take thee, William Daniel Walker, take thee, William Daniel Walker to, be to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold, to have and to hold from this day forward, from this day forward for better or for worse, for better or for worse, for better or for worse, 
for better or for worse, for, better or for, worse. for richer or poor, for in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, and for death he was part. The type of love that is demonstrated here today in this union, that type of love reminds me of the type of love that we find in the scriptures in the book of Ruth. Ruth had these words from her mother-in-law, Naomi, but they are words that each of you can speak to one another also. Entreat me not to leave me, nor to return after following me. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more, if all the death part me and thee. In Christ, the two shall become one. Amen. Face the crowd. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, by the authority that's vested in me as a minister of the gospel and the state of Alabama. As soon as the groom kisses the bride, <laughs> you may kiss your bride, by the way. Amen. <laughs> Karen says you can do that again if you want to. <laughs> Amen. By the powers vested in me as a minister of the gospel in the state of Alabama, I give to you the newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. William Daniel Walker. spiritually done what we were supposed to do. Now, God, I ask that you bless the children. Lord, bless them so that the love that they have for one another will last through the good times and the bad times. Lord, we pray that you would just allow your grace to fall upon their home. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Now you can per give God some praise in the house. Amen and amen.